Long before there were planes, trains, or automobiles, people traveled the world in a blink of an eye and explored exotic foreign cultures with the power of their imagination. I'm Graham Smart, and this is GenreFest. Worlds of new stories, stories of new worlds. <laughs> travel writing has been around for centuries and encompasses lots of different kinds of books, including travel guides, expedition memoirs, accounts of military campaigns, religious pilgrimages, documentaries, and even straight up fiction. For most of human history, it was extremely difficult and dangerous to travel very far from where you grew up. So when somebody showed up telling stories of their journey to a strange land, you took notice. For most people, it was their only opportunity to learn anything about the bigger world outside their village or town. Notable early examples of what we might now recognize as travel writing include the travels of Marco Polo, chronicling the 13th century journey of Italian merchant Marco Polo across Europe and Asia to the court of Mongol Emperor Kublai Khan, or the amazing travels of Ibn Battuta, recounting one man's 14th century pilgrimage to Mecca that unexpectedly turned into a 30-year journey through most of the known world. In recent times, the wide availability of world travel allowed for a reinvention of the travel genre, with ordinary people taking trips that you, the reader, might actually be able to recreate in your own life. Classics of this type include Bruce Chatwin's In Patagonia and Paul Theroux's The Great Railway Bazaar, both of which came out in the 1970s. But here's why travel writing is the genre you should check out. The obvious appeal of travel writing is the chance to learn about exotic new places and people. That's certainly a huge part of why this genre is so great. But travel writing at its best tells you as much about the journey and the person making it as it does about the place it visited. Travel writing immerses us in experiences we might never be able to witness ourselves and lets us see them through the eyes of the people making the journey. We see their reactions to these new experiences and imagine what our own might be. With just a little imagination, we can make the journey ourselves. Sometimes these destinations are literally impossible to reach. They no longer exist, such as in Heinrich Harrer's Tibet, or the legendary abandoned bus in John Krakow's Into the Wild. They might be mythical, like the Shangri-La of James Hilton's Lost Horizon. Or the story could just be made up, as in Alex Garland's The Beach, a tale of a journey to find a secret, perfect destination whose location is a jealously guarded secret. You might be familiar with the film adaptation starring Leonardo DiCaprio, but read the book first, it's infinitely better. Want the real thing? Take some advice from an expert travel planner. Rolf Pott guides us through the long-term travel on a budget in his book, Vagabonding. The idea of changing up your life priorities and heading off alone into the wide blue yonder might seem impossible, but Rolf Pott shows us how to do it and how to make the most of the most precious resource, time. You don't have to just stick to books for this genre either. A personal favorite of mine is Brooke Silver Braga's film, A Map for Saturday tale of how he follows his dream of wandering the globe as a long-term solo traveller. He really shows you the lifestyle and the surprising variety of people who live it. In fact, it was this film that was partly responsible for my own 18 months trek around the world. With all these choices, one thing is certain. You may not be able to travel much right now, but you can always get lost in the travel genre. You can find the recommendations in this video and much more at your local public library. Check out our other videos to see more fantastic genres that you never knew you'd love. I'm Graham Smart, and this has been GenreFest. Worlds of new stories, stories of new worlds. <laughs>